if our ultimate goal is can we keep the size and look of kind of where you're at, but then feel a little bit leaner and also be able to eat like 2,500 calories, then the ultimate goal is to speed your metabolism. Yeah. Nothing is going to do that better than yep. us building muscle. But the hard part, and I think the part that Sal's kind of alluding to is that the psychological part, when we're on this reverse diet and I'm asking you to eat more calories and you get you put on your jeans one day and they feel a little tighter, not to freak out and go, oh, I got to go the other direction. In fact, the main thing I'd be communicating is let's just focus on strength. Let's just look at your lifts. Let's try and get stronger. That's our goal of this program. Let's get stronger, get stronger, get stronger. That's all I'm going to speak to while also trying to slowly increase calories. If we can increase calories by a few hundred and you can get stronger, I really don't give a shit about how your genes feel temporarily. I don't really don't give a shit about where the scale is saying up or down a couple pounds. That's what I want to hear. And then I'll, I would cut you from there and then get you to the exact size you want to be. When you pull in your waist, when you suck it in and make it smaller, that's a muscle that's doing that. It's called the TVA. Well, check this out. You can train that muscle to be stronger and actually shrink your waist without getting any leaner. It's not the abs. It's not the obliques. It's the transverse abdominis. Yeah. I uh, Sounds like an infomercial. It I does, like doesn't this. it? Yeah, it does. uh, and check out this new piece of equipment. <laughs> yeah. There's actually nothing to sell. It's not new. It's really old uh, uh, technique. That's I why know. it's not popular. There's nothing you attach to I it. I don't know what you would like. What you would attach to nothing. that. Nothing. That's why. To sell, right? <laughs> yeah, nothing. It's nothing. Yeah, it's interesting. I I, um, I learned about this the, the exercises and techniques to do this from old bodybuilding magazines because back in the day, there was a bodybuilding pose called the vacuum pose. Mm -hmm. In fact, they do it now in the classic bodybuilding division. They have this new division where they're trying to make them look more like, you know, bodybuilders of the eighties. And they brought back that pose, right? Cause it hark harkens back to the classic, you know, eras of bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. And basically it's hands behind the head and we'll pull up a picture where you suck in. You visibly see the ribs a lot more. Yeah. And you see the serratus anterior and, it, and you have to train it to really make it happen. And, and, People who have a really strong TVA can suck in and really shrink their waist. Well, anyway, that muscle, if you work it and strengthen it, in in some cases, many cases in my experience of training clients, that they would notice that their waist would get smaller and they didn't have to get leaner just because they tightened that muscle up. Yeah, and also there's lots of cool applications, especially for postpartum and like losing that access through – uh, pregnancy, like to be able to reconnect to that muscle and be able to kind of get things back on track and be able to stabilize your spine, like all these muscles that are there for a purpose, uh, you know, to, to gain that kind of accessibility again is, is great. Would you teach this first or would you teach like a, like in a quadruped position, draw and maneuver first? See, that's Ooh. how I see. That's how I was originally exposed to. I didn't yeah. really know the bodybuilder technique specifically. Yeah. I, w I would typically do what you just what you just said with quadruped, but I would regress back to just basic hands and knees. Let's see if we can pull your belly button up, especially when I worked with postpartum uh, women because they were so disconnected from. <clears throat> so think about that muscle as like the body's weight belt. So it wraps around the, the core, right? When you're pregnant, it has to atrophy and stretch. Obviously, it has to make room, so you get this muscle stretch. And then often what happens is women will have a baby, and then they'll go train their abs and obliques, but that muscle will stay kind of weak, and then what they'll complain about is they'll say things like, you know, I've been working on my abs and my core, and I'm lean, but I got this lower belly pooch ever since I had a baby. And sometimes that's due to the fact that this TVA isn't strong. So I would get postpartum women. I'd have them try to suck in and do this drawing maneuver and they couldn't connect to it at all. Yeah. And so that's yeah. how I would practice first. And then I would, once they were able to, then I would do something a little more challenging. Well, and also posturally too, like for me to address what you see a lot of times when overhead pressing, you'll see this like arching of the lower yeah. back and lots of pain and tension in the lower back to focus on the TVA and really gaining access there to, to bring that rib flare down in good posture and stack your spine. It, it absolves that issue as well. Totally. So I would, I would put a client, the reason why I would do this too is for your exact point is like a, a, a lot of clients can't even activate their TVA, right? They're they're so disconnected. And this isn't just pregnant women. Like some people have just completely oh, yeah. disconnected yeah, from that area. That. Um, and and when you tell them to draw in, they hold their breath yeah. and they don't actually use that muscle to pull up. So putting them on all four like that, now we're using gravity. So we, we're using gravity. There's feedback. It's, yeah, there's a feedback there. And then I would take actually a PVC pipe and I would rest it. So I'd have them, you know, tilt their head down, 
to where you have their cervical spine nice and neutral and then their low back. And so I'd want the, the PVC pipe to hit all three points, their head, their upper back, and then their hips. Mm. And that, and that, cause the other thing people do is they, 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 they roll their spine and arch mm. their back mm -hmm. to try and draw in like that too. So I want them to understand how to keep the neutral spine while they draw in. And then also, can you actually breathe yeah. while you do Keep that? Keep it yes. tight and breathe. Well, yeah. that's, a, by the way, that is hard yeah. for people who don't have No, this. It's, that's an exercise in itself. I mean, I, that would be a, a foundational exercise that I would teach a lot of clients when we first get started because you have to first get that down. And then if you do a good job of laying that foundation, then when you get to more complex movements, you can, you can get them to organize their posture and their body. Mm -hmm much easier because you've you've taught that first versus going right into a, a more basic or fundamental movement that everyone's familiar with and then saying oh you know stand up tall or draw your core in you know and you and, yep. you, and you say that and then like huh it's like completely yeah, foreign it's to weird them. when you yeah. don't have connection to a muscle telling it would be like telling someone to uh it would be like telling me to make this desk levitate i have no connection to it there's i don't know how i don't know what i'm doing so when you get someone who doesn't have a connection, you understand the force. Yeah, it's weird, right? Like you would you would get someone who doesn't have this connection, and as a trainer, it's your cues. You have to. I would I would put my finger on their belly button, and I'd say, see if you can lift your belly button towards your spine, and you would see them go like, I can't, I can't do. It. I say, well, we just gotta sit here and try, and sometimes it would take three sessions, like yeah. three workouts, before they go, oh, what is that? Oh, I can feel it. Like, okay, we're connecting. Now let's get it stronger. But yeah, that muscle, yeah. if you can't connect to it, it's not stabilizing. And so now you're relying on all the other stabilizers. This is why you know, oftentimes people have low back pain, even though they're training their core a particular way. Or again, they notice that lower belly pooch. The, the reason why you get that lower belly pooch is because your internal organs, as you're standing, gravity kind of pushes them down and out. So if that muscle isn't tight, mm -hmm. it'll bulge out a little bit. Yeah. And you'll have that kind of, you know, you'll have the increased waist size uh, from it. So yeah, it's a, it's a great exercise, a great way to strengthen and tighten your core. It is imperative for postpartum women in particular. This was one of the first exercises that I would do when they would come in after having a baby and I would tell them, I would have them practice it on their it's own. It's an easy yep. way to make yourself look like you lost 10 to 15 pounds and not lose any, any, any weight mm -hmm. at all. Yeah. Uh, you know, how many times have you guys pretty done quickly that? quickly too. It's well, it's, it's also essential to keeping you in good posture, totally. right? So when the, the transverse abdominus activates, I, I used to give this analogy of like, I'd have like this, a pen in my, in my hand yeah. and I would be like, it'd be like loose. Yeah. Be like this the is like pencil a, fist analogy. Yes, right. This is, million times after this is, this that. is, uh, <laughs> this is your spine. And then when you activate your TV, yeah, it was like a vacuum, right? Yep. So now it's all so, and that's what also holds you up into that good posture. So if I can get you to, you know, learn first of all how to activate that muscle, and then we train and strengthen it, you're gonna have better overall posture. Low back pain tends to go away. You automatically look better. Like I could take a client in an assessment and have them posture up, activate their core, and then show them their reflection of before and after of what they look like. And you right away, you already look like you've lost 10, 15 pounds just by standing up. Totally. Yeah. If you think of the, when people talk about core stability and you think of the spine, the spine is obviously made of a lot of joints and it can move in almost any direction. Like if you took a spine out and tried to stand it up, it would just flop over. So it's all these muscles that surround it and muscles that uh, connect to the surrounding muscles that contribute to stability. And good stability is the balance and efficiency of how they work together. And what happens when one muscle or two muscles doesn't stabilize the way it should is that the other muscles then start to take over mm -hmm. and try to pick up the slack. And this is not a bad thing. This is a this is a compensation. You need it. However, when this goes on long enough, you develop problems. For example, a lot of back pain is not due to problems with the spine. It's very common for someone to have their psoas muscle have to do way more work than it needs to. And that's a hip flexor. You think, what does a hip flexor have to do with my spine? Well, it goes through the body, attaches at the lower back. And if other muscles aren't doing what they're supposed to, that psoas is constantly pulling. And at the attachments, you get inflamed. And what does it feel like? It feels like low back pain yeah. on one side uh, or the other. The lower lats, a lot of people don't know the lower lats are involved in stability. The glutes are involved in stability. And of course, your abs, obliques, internal, external, and then your TVA. So, But the TVA being the one that Oftentimes, because most people have no idea that that's even a muscle that you need to train or strengthen, yeah. that one often is, uh, you know, is a big it's overlooked issue. quite a bit. Yeah. Totally overlooked. Yeah, yeah. So, by the way, this is when you, if you ever put on 
like uh, something stabilizing around your midsection, like they like you see people at Home Depot wear those things, yeah. and all of a sudden they're like, "Oh, my back doesn't hurt anymore." Like, well, you did that artificially. Yeah. You could totally do that with your. With you can do your, that intrinsically. You can, yeah, work on that muscle. You could totally do that. Well, with that's your, the you with know, and by the way, that is the problem with braces like that. Oh and, my god! And, and the weight belt would be included in that, especially for people that wear weight belts their entire time of lifting. Is that you're you're basically creating an artificial core. And, weakening you know, with the one you have yeah which which exactly the body will adapt and go like oh cool i don't I, this core your your actual you core covered. doesn't need to be strong because i'm you know artificially propping it up with this belt and so you actually just get weaker in that area and yes you're maybe supported because you have this artificial support while you're working at home depot or while you're in the gym and you're mm -hmm. lifting but let's be honest are you wearing that all the time or do you want to wear that all the time of no. course not it's not no. a good idea Oh boy, here we go. One of my favorite giveaways, the RGB bundle, MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, MAPS Aesthetic. You can get it for free, but you got to do this. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode, start a nice conversation, subscribe to this channel, and turn on notifications. Do all those things. If we like your comment, we'll notify you in the comment section, and you'll get free access to those three programs. That's nine months of exercise programming. Also, we got a crazy promotion going on right now until... August 14th. So it's not going on all month. We're going to end it short because it's that big. So check this out. We've taken very popular MAPS workout programs combinations, uh, combinations like MAPS Split and MAPS Power Lift or MAPS Prime and Prime Pro and Anywhere or MAPS Anabolic and MAPS Performance. Those are all examples, right? We've got lots of different bundles, either two or three program bundles. Every single one is only $99.99. And again, this promotion ends on the 14th of this month. So take advantage, go to mapsaugust.com, find the bundle or bundles that work best for you and get yourself signed up. All right, here comes the show. So anyway, I wanted to, uh, I'm going to change topics here, but, um, I've been reading a lot about alpha lipoic acid. So I'm, but I'm going to get to why I've been reading a lot about this particular compound. I brought it up before. Other than you being a dork. Yeah. Besides that, <laughs> besides that, I like to read about weird shit. <laughs> What'd you do for your weekend, Justin? I oh, I read studies on yeah, alpha lipoic yeah. acid. Aren't you guys happy that I, well, I, I did that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. You're right. You're right. right. Fair enough. Reading, I was reading they up got, on exotic they bugs. Got every, yeah. Yeah. every group needs one. Thank you very much. So yeah. anyway, so but here's what led me to that, right? So we just, we've talked about about now on past podcasts how the serotonin model of depression and its role in depression has just been flipped on its head. Yeah. Okay. And this is a big deal because for decades we've built an entire industry around this theory of depression that it's this deficiency of serotonin. And what ends up happening is you get funding in that direction, you get more medications in that direction, they get you know approved by uh, you know uh, investors and all that stuff, and you end up building this entire house on a faulty premise, which is really crazy, right? Well, they just, they did that with Alzheimer's. So Alzheimer's, uh, it's coming out now that the whole approach to like the beta amyloid plaque theory of Alzheimer's, like this is what's causing the symptoms, hmm. which what they're not saying is there isn't a connection, but what they're finding now is that that was actually faulty. And we've developed this entire industry around drugs that prevent beta amyloid plaques from building. And there's no research, for example, that shows that this new drug, hmm. yes, it reduces that, but it doesn't solve Alzheimer's. It's not correcting the problem. So just huge amounts of money have gone totally in these directions that have been a complete waste of time. Really, really crazy. But the reason why I got to alpha lipoic acid is because I'm looking at this Alzheimer's research. I talked to Max Lugavere a little bit. He, you know, this is a big area of study. Yeah, no, I saw his post last week, and I didn't. That's what I actually me. didn't know what it was all about. It was like he was like big news in, in Alzheimer's this week, and he talked about two like main studies that were like completely upended. Yes. So originally, so they found that like there was a correlation between a, a, a beta amyloid plaque buildup within Alzheimer's They didn't find patients, shit. It was, was fraudulent, it? So right? what it was is essentially, and I'm- I'm, I'm, I'm just I'm, trying to see where they like got to that. I'm pathway. not 100% privy on it, okay? But from what I understand, they, they, they came up with a theory that the beta amyloid plaques are the cause. And if we could just prevent those from building, mm. we will solve Alzheimer's. And there was a study- that now turns out that wasn't that great. But anyway, it, it came out a long time ago and everybody was like, oh, this is it. This is the silver bullet because Alzheimer's is a big issue. It's a big problem. It's chronic yeah. degenerative disease. It's growing. We have an aging population. Like if you could solve Alzheimer's, like you're solving yeah. a big problem. And what happens when, when this happens is then the government comes out and says, okay, 
we're going to give funding towards solving that part of the problem. Yeah. So then studies come out, more people are, are, are putting money that way. Pharmaceutical companies are directing their, their efforts towards that. And it's, it's not uh, profitable or it's very risky to go in any other direction because you're not going to get funding. Investors are like, look, if, if you have a drug that's going to stop beta amyloid plaques, we'll give you money. But if you have a drug that's going to go in this other direction with this other theory that we have, mm. we're not going to give you any money. So it's just, we build these entire industries around it. So that's kind of, you know, what's, what's happened. So anyway, because of that, I started looking at the alternative theories. Now I have said many times on the show, I know we have that, um, some researchers will call Alzheimer's and dementia type three diabetes, mm -hmm. that there's a connection between our inability to utilize glucose and our insensitivity to insulin to Alzheimer's. And we know that if you give an, someone who's Alzheimer on, who has Alzheimer's or dementia, you put them on a ketogenic diet we see improvements in cognition. Mm -hmm. So that shows us something. So there's this alternate theory that has to do with that and mitochondrial health, the health of the engines of our cells. But not a lot of money's gone there, right? But you mm -hmm. hear wellness people talking a lot about mitochondrial health yeah. lately. Well, anyway, that's what got me down that rabbit hole of mitochondrial health. One of the best things you could take for your mitochondria, creatine, it fuels mitochondria, and then alpha lipoic acid. Very, very good for mitochondrial health and very good for insulin sensitivity. Isn't that the one you told me to pair with my creatine? Yes. It is. Yes. Okay. So alpha lipoic acid, great for mitochondrial health, reduces oxidative stress very effectively, increases muscle creatine um, concentration. So even if you don't have creat taking creatine, alpha lipoic acid seems to increase that. Mm. Um, it's, it's Like I said, it's very, very potent antioxidant. Uh, so interesting. I, and so I've been supplementing it now with it for the last six months. So, you know, we work with a company called live on and one of the products they have is alpha lipoic acid and they put it in this, uh, liposomal packet. In other words, it's, it's very absorbable and I've been using it for a while. And I think I notice a difference when I take it versus when I don't, I did notice with the CGM. So I had the continual glucose monitor on and I noticed that my glucose did not do the same thing when I took alpha lipoic acid. So it does oh, seem to have a sensitizing effect um, on insulin. Wow. So I think it's a supplement that has got a lot of benefit for, for people interested in longevity, health. Yeah. Uh, That's and what it sounds like it, uh, in terms of wellness and longevity. And, and you speculated too how creatine was going to move into the totally. wellness category. Sounds like the combination of both of those would be a great... If, if you can keep your mitochondria healthy you'll probably prevent a lot of chronic disease. It seems like a lot of chronic disease is, is, is being connected now to poor health of the, the engines of our cells. Mm -hmm. And that's so... That's wouldn't the, wouldn't the infrared light fall into that category yep. too? Yep. Okay, they're all doing that, yep. right? They all help that, definitely. Wow, wow. So I, thought I read, so I thought I read that on that study that it, was, they, it came out that it was completely fraudulent. Fraudulent, yes. Like they made false claims completely. People signed off on it. Like yep. doctors signed off on it like when they shouldn't have. Yeah. Like You know what the problem is? And I'm going to have, I'm mm. trying to get Max on the show to break this down because I, uh, I you know, I'm not, like I said. Obviously not, it's his space. He's way more. Yeah. And I'm not privy, privy enough to, to really break it down. But I do know that in science, getting funding can be very challenging if you're going to go, for example, I'll use this example. Let's say you are a scientist and you have this like really novel interesting alternative theory towards cancer. So like, you know what? I got this really interesting theory on how we may be able to be able to cure cancer. Getting funding for that would be really hard. Now, if I came out and said, if that same scientist said, hey, I've got this new form of chemo that's safer and maybe kills more cancer cells, because it's already in a category that's already established, you're more likely to get funding. This is why opiates like just, you know, and if you come up with alternative forms of pain, you know, medicine, it's hard, right? Plus, if you're a scientist and it's just so out, stupid of me because it's like the opposite of what science is supposed to be. You're right. Science is supposed to be constantly challenging what we believe. And instead it's like, oh, well, we already believe this. So you can go do research and studies on that because this is where we That's already where get the believe. Funding. But mm -hmm. we're not going to finance. We're not going to help any of these ones that challenge any of these beliefs, which just flies right in the face of all these hardcore it's, science. It's really and stuff, crazy. Right? And yeah. also if you're a scientist and you are coming out to disprove you'll destroy your career oftentimes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes you have to, you're really it's putting- It's not advantageous for them to- It's not even advantageous it. for them to do what they're supposed to do, which no. is challenge these ideas. Yep. It is way more advantageous for them to fall in line with what everybody else believes because that's that's how they'll get recognized. That's where they'll get the money. It's such bullshit. This dude. is where I think 
um, government spending could be valuable because I I am you guys know I'm, everybody knows I'm a super free market guy, but I do think that when markets don't, can't exist, that's where there may be value. Like I could see governments coming out and saying, "I would love this. We're going to fund alternative treatments because there's no market, there's no market investment viability." Like investors, I'm I'm as an investor, I wouldn't invest some weird technology yeah. that has no track records. I'm going to lose my money. So yeah. that's where I think there's. So I don't know though. So I, I, my challenge, I would still challenge that and go back to your free market belief because I would believe that there's enough, you know, hundred millionaires and billionaires out there that have ha that have been impacted by these things that need to be researched. That if you were going to put your money towards any direction, that's. I mean, look at just like Max is a good example. Like he's dedicated his life yeah. to learning about this topic because it, it it impacted him so close to home with his mother. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you can't tell me there's not money out there that's attached to people that have been affected by these things that need to have research done I to them. I, I, I think, think letting the government involved is like you're you're. I, look, it's it's I, it's one of those things where I think it's like uh, like necessary evil in some cases. I I, I agree with you. But man, do you know how many billions of dollars it takes with no return for a long time? We, to me, that's a whole other argument, right? Yeah. Because so, if you go back to true free market stuff, what would happen is you would you would free up a lot of that shit. Well, I mean, if you really want to make it viable, what you do is you 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 completely change our FDA because to get a drug from to from inception to market is like a billion dollars. Mm -hmm. So maybe I've said this before, you know, maybe what we had was a tier system where it's like high risk drugs with very little evidence and it goes down and then the consumer can pick. So if you're really sick and you're like, I'll take, look, this one over here, I know it's got like one study that shows maybe it works, but I'm terminal. So I'll go ahead and try it out. You know, maybe something like that. And then you'd have enough people using it where you start to get data. But I don't know if people are ready for that. You know what I mean? I don't know if people yeah, are ready to let people take weird shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, how was uh, how was your weekend over there, solo guy? Dude, you've been solo since like what Wednesday or Thursday last week? Still yeah, solo? Yeah, the kids and and Courtney went to Lake Coeur d'Alene uh, to hang out with my brother in law. They had a great time. It was funny because I was like, well, they're probably going to stay an excessive amount of time, and so I don't want to take work off or nothing, and like I want them to just have fun. So I was like, you guys just go. And so, the, like, I'm just trying to catch up on stuff, which is good. And I'm like, kind of do my thing. But I was getting bored, dude. Like, I, you know, being by myself for too long, I get bored. Uh, but they're sending me all these videos, like, having the greatest time ever, dude. Like, <laughs> my kids, again, like, I missed out on my kids catching a fish. Like, I took them and didn't work out. You know, like, yeah. they went and, and learned how to, like, water ski, you know? And then, like, send me videos. I'm like, oh, cool. Like, that's <laughs> cool. awesome. Dad misses yeah. out again. Later on. Uh, yeah, we're going out tonight and, um, oh, by the way, like, I guess we found out that there's this private concert with Lenny Kravitz and so we're going to drive the boat and then watch a free concert and then there's going to be fireworks and it's like, I'm like, whoa, that's awesome. Like, good for you. Yeah. You're at uh, home, I was like, all total FOMO. You're at home dude. trimming the hedges. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, dude, seriously. Uh, and I'm like, you know, take care. Of the, the dogs are like extra needy. So I just was getting out and trying to like manage them for most of the weekend. But um, yeah, dude, I mean, I, again, it was just good. alone. I you was just, just by myself. Yeah, you didn't invite no, no kids, no wife, no nothing. Yeah. You didn't invite anybody over. You just stay at home like a hermit. Yeah, I haven't done that forever. You guys haven't done that in a while where you're just like, oh, you did that not too long ago, I right? did, and it's fun for two days. And yeah. after that, I'm like... There's a cap to that, dude. Yeah. It was like one day for me, I was like, yeah, like, ah, uh, you know, kick my feet up, <laughs> yeah. watch, you know, all the man shows and like all the action <laughs> stuff and comedy that I can never watch. And then it was, that was, it was like, it was cool and it was gone. Did you take a bath like Adam does? <laughs> with, the, with the bubbles and the wine? No, I didn't, I didn't get that fancy. I probably should have, you yeah. know, like probably, probably should have made just the most of that. Just soaking a bath. Yeah, just soak. Read a novel. Petals, and, <laughs> you know, candles. Get and really yawning. into a book. Don't be yeah. a hater, bro. You know, sure. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. you it looked like you had uh, Max by yourself. I did, I did. Oh, you guys took you took him to his first movie. This is our first time going to the movies. Yeah. You ready? Yeah. Are you ready for the movies? Yes. Like a big boy? Yeah. Are you going to sit through the whole movie? Yeah. You going to eat some popcorn? Popcorn. Um, um, popcorn? Are we, what are we going to go see? Missy. What are we going to go watch? Minions. Yeah. Minions. All right. Pray for us, bro. Did he watch the whole thing, bro? Listen to this. So, okay, so I, I have Matt. I have Max. So I had him from Thursday all the way till Sunday. Katrina came back Sunday late, uh, late afternoon, early evening, and um, like what day was it? Saturday, I think it was. 
we uh i took i i love to take him for a drive uh to put him to sleep um i already like driving and like our kind of our thing is to drive the coast and like i have this little route and it takes about an hour and i'm like cruising one and like he falls asleep and i'm just kind of chilling right so that was like our thing so we i take him out at noon he passes out in the car we drive for like an hour up and down the coast and then we're, he wakes up he wakes up all in a good mood and stuff like that because he got good sleep and we're heading back to the house and i'm like you know what like, uh, I wanted to swing by the movie theater. Katrina had called the movie theater, like, uh, I don't know, a week or two ago. I asked her to call down there and see what it would cost for me to rent the whole thing to ourselves. Because mm -hmm. I was like, I had this idea that, I, first of all, I'm a huge movie person already. And I, like, if I was going to bring my son there, I'm like, you know what? I heard that it's not that crazy expensive to, like, rent the, rent the whole thing. And maybe I'll do it for Max and a couple of his friends and we'd have the whole place. So she called down there and she got some kid who's, like, like just started working there, had no answers for her, couldn't help out. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go there and see if I can go talk to the, the general manager. Yeah. So I just rolled up there in the afternoon. I pick, I take Max out with me and we walk up and this is like first time even in the movie theater. So he's like looking around. He's like so enamored by the lights mm. and everything going on. I'm talking to the general manager and stuff. And they're like, yeah, you know, this place is really small. We don't do that. And I'm like, you know, I live right around the corner. I said, I'll come on a weekday when you'd be closed when you're not. I was like, I said, I'm really flexible about when. I imagine you guys could use the revenue and stuff like that. He goes, no, absolutely. You know what? Let me take your number. Let's figure, we'll figure something out. We'll do something. Well, then I go to leave and Max doesn't want to leave. He wants to like, he really wants to stay. And I'm like, do you want to go to a movie? He's like, yeah, yeah. And I said, okay, well, daddy's got to take you home. We got to change real quick. And then we'll come back, put some shoes on you and stuff. And then we'll come back and we'll go to the, we'll, we'll go to a movie. And I pull up the thing, and these are the movie theaters where you can uh, you can you can book your seats. So you yeah. can see how much of it's taken up. And I'm like, okay, let me see if it's not crazy. If it's not crazy packed, and it's in 20 minutes, I'm like, it in all lines. And, and sure enough, I got on there. It was Minions, and there's like six people in there. Oh, perfect. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So if he acts all crazy and stuff like that, I won't be all that embarrassed. It'll be this easy. Is a kid movie. Yeah, yeah if he moves around a little bit too, it's not a big deal because it won't be packed at yeah. all. So I picked a little spot where we kind of had plenty of seats on all sides and. So I'm like all prepared, right? I pack his diaper bag. I bring his like little snacks and his drink and everything I got going on. And so, and I take him there. And right when we get there, the, like the right up the road is the the college, and the whole college class is in like walks in front of us because we're we're walk. I'm walking him, so we're walking hell slow. And I see them coming, and it's like a mob of probably like 30, 40 kids, you know, college kids. And they all get in before me and they all go straight to the line. I'm like, oh shit. Oh, no. Right. So not, and I'm like, I do not want to. And I'm, so I'm standing in line with him. He was so good, dude. I threw him on my shoulders and uh, just waited. We waited the whole time to get up there. By this time, the, the movie time is hit. It's already 2.40. I'm still in line to get the popcorn. I get all the popcorn. I get a popcorn. I get a water. I get a Diet Coke. And then, uh, the general manager see him and everybody everybody was talking to him because they think he's such a cute fucking great kid and so he's because he's behaving so well right in a place like this and they're trying to give him a bunch of free stuff he's like oh does he like banana <laughs> slurpee i'm like oh he's never had anything like that and so the guy gives him that's gonna want that shit every time so, they watch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. so he gives him a free slurpee and he's trying to give him candy i'm like nah we're good we're good thank you i, I got some of those uh you know basically glorified candy the 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 fruit snack gummy things uh -huh. which are pretty much fucking but they're candy. organic yeah, 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 right. <laughs> basically yeah. basically glorified gummy bears yeah, you know what yeah. i'm saying right so i grab those so i'm like completely my hands are full diaper bags on me everything like that and i and i tell him i'm like you got to take the tickets you got to give the tickets for daddy because daddy's hands are full okay so he walks right up and hands the guy the tickets and he scans it gives them back to him we walk in the theater so that and he's so funny because he's just like you know looking all over the place people are behind him they got everybody was being patient so that i'm so glad i didn't have any rude people and i'm like come on son we gotta let like i let people go out. okay so he comes up we get, I pop him in his seat, and now I'm like, like full on, like get everything. My wallet and keys out. I gotta set that over there. I gotta get his water up here. I gotta oh get my, my god, popcorn dude. here, wedging the popcorn perfect. And I'm like playing defense. You know what I'm saying? Like getting ready for like, okay, my son gonna be like a handful to to watch this movie. And uh, finally, we get all situated and sit down, and he fucking sits down and watches the whole thing. Dude. Wow, whole thing. I mean, literally. Halfway through, um, at one point, I picked him up and actually sat him in my lap. So I, I wedged the popcorn in between my seat like this. And so for half the movie, he's laid on my chest with his legs all up, watching. You oh, know? it was what so a great moment. It was so yeah. cute, too, because I don't know if you guys saw the, fun, the, the picture or whatever. Yeah. He held the tickets like the whole movie. 
So uh, he got he he did the tickets. They gave them back to him, and he never let go of the tickets. That's hilarious. Yes, he's just holding. You watched the whole thing. You probably he thought you had to like thing. hold it to, to stay there. I know. Bro, I don't you know. got something you could do with him now, bro. I was, I was ready to go the next morning, but I felt so bad because I didn't want to leave I'm Katrina you, out of movie it. Theaters rule, dude. I was so ready to take him to the movies again because he was so good, and I he's never even sat through a whole cartoon or movie at home. Yeah. So I was not. Totally I was already there. prepared. I'm like, I told Katrina, I was like, the way it all went out, I was like, it was a matinee. Nobody was there. I figured I didn't even tell you because I was like, you know what? He's going to want to go. And that's okay. I lose, I lose 30 bucks or 20 something bucks, yeah, whatever. whatever it was, whatever, just to test it. Right. And see, see what it's going to be 30, like. If you, even if they're 30 minutes, it's fun. Yeah. That's what I thought. I, I, that's why I kind of, well, yeah, even though I get 30 minutes out of it, it was a new experience, yeah. whatever like that. I had, I'd already made, I already told myself that going into it. Bro, he was so good. Bro, he I didn't make it. There was kids that were like noisy in there. He wasn't distracted. He wasn't talking. He was just into it. Oh, into so, I, so I did that awesome. with my older kids right around that age, and they did the same thing. And yeah. then we developed this like, it's like a thing that dad does with them. Mm -hmm. Until this day, we all love going to the movies. And I, I can't wait. It. And I grew up that way. But my young, so Aurelius, we took when he was 19 months, which is early to try watching a full movie. Yeah. So we were prepared. Like, and I, the, the bet was, I told Jessica, no way he makes it past 25 minutes. She said, I bet you he'll make it past 25. So that was the bet. 25 was the break. Let's yeah. see what happens. He made it an hour and 10 minutes. Didn't watch the whole movie. At that point, though, he started getting loud. So then we took him out. Yeah. But an hour and 10 minutes, I yeah. couldn't believe it. And you Crazy. know why he stopped? We ran out of popcorn. Yeah. Now I know. <laughs> bring more popcorn. Because that's be what'll do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Give him one you know kernel. what actually ended up working to my favor was the line that we had to stand in to get the popcorn. So the anticipation of going up there to buy the stuff was entertaining for him because he was on my shoulders wanting to do that. And because we were like late to going into the movie, you know, the first like twenty minutes of the movie is all preview crap, anyways. Yeah. yeah. So it was actually good that I, and now I know I'm like, you know what? I'm actually just going to show up like five minutes late because you have your seats reserved anyways. So he doesn't have to sit through, like, luckily he didn't have to sit the 30 minutes before the movie even starts. Cause mm -hmm. then that would have probably been a little more challenging because mm -hmm. they don't only play cartoons. They're playing other stuff yeah. during that and commercials that would have probably been hard, but because it was like the cartoon, like almost right away. And it was funny too, cause but it's immersive too. It's the sound. Oh, yeah, he, it's everything. So he, it's totally he jumped like the experience. first, the first like three like parts yeah. Yeah. where the, you know, speakers were loud, you know, and the surround sound hit on like some parts. He, he, he jumped, but he wasn't scared. It was just like kind of startled him that it was so, so, loud, so loud and he yeah. stuck with it, man. Dude, I go back to my original argument with that, man. I swear, like it's not going away. It may be novel, more yeah. novel, like going, but you see all the studios now is, you know, removing a lot of the streaming options immediately for um, these, these blockbuster movies coming out. They want people in the theaters. They want them in the seats. And then, you know, to, to highlight. I agree. Later. I don't think it's disappearing. But, I think it's, it's, it's always going to be like the experience destination thing, but I well, don't it, think it, it's going to be like what it used to be where you well, had it reignited to it for me a hundred percent. I mean, I was on the argument on the other side of like, I, and, and I, for myself or for Katrina and I, I'm like, whatever, I'd almost rather be home. But for him, I mean, I watched him the whole movie. Yeah, exactly. I was like so into him. It's just something to yeah. do. Him, into him watching and experience than I was actually yeah. the movie. The so only, that was cool. The only reason why I would personally, as for me, without my kids, want to go more to a movie, to the movies than stay at home, is if there's some kind of nostalgic, like... Like if it's like a movie that I'm like, oh my god, it's the it's you know a new Matrix or Lord of the Rings, like something like that. The yeah, anticipation the next experience, Dune, like I'm in. Yeah, but most of the time I'd rather watch it at home. Yeah, I'll, they also or, have. Yeah, I don't care what brand and what they have. They just have never been able to replicate true movie cor movie popcorn too. Yeah, it's like, the liquid. They have a it's secret the liquid butter. like formula. There is. There. Yeah. It's the, the liquid butter. Right? It, it, maybe <laughs> whatever it is, it does not take the one you do at home. And it's I've tried to like people. melt my own butter and do all yeah. this. Like, just does not, it just never amounts to the same thing it's, to me. Well, yeah. Well, speaking of unique and different experiences, like I got reminded of, um, it, it was pretty funny. I hung out with my parents a bit too, uh, you know, over when I was hanging out by myself. Cause I was just like, well, I, you know, I guess I'll hang out with my parents for a bit. And, uh, Hey mom, started, can you come over? Yeah. They're like, can you come over? Cause yeah. they knew like, you know, my family was gone and they're just like any opportunity where they can kind of pull me to catch up. Yeah. And so I was like, all right, I'll come over. And so we kind of started like riffing about old stories and things. And like, it came up when I used to be in a band in, in Chicago and we were like this crazy heavy metal band. And they reminded me, which I totally forgot about this time where, it was Mother's Day, 
And like, I had already had like all these shows lined up cause I was booking a lot of them, uh, in the band that was like sort of my role. It was like, you know, trying to market, promote us and all that stuff. And so we had this like show downtown Chicago and it happened to land on mother's day and my, and my mom and my dad were in town to see me, uh, you know, in Chicago. And so I was like, yeah, come on, let's, you know, so I literally like brought them to the show, like not even thinking about like how ridiculous like our music is right. And, and like how much my parents, like, it's like nails on a chalkboard for this. But like my mom is, is very much like wanted to help. And so like, she was like videotaping it with this old like VHS camera and on the bottom, it kept flashing like mother's day, mother's day. <laughs> Did like, you watch the video again? So I, she was trying to find it for me. I haven't seen it yet, but Damn. I want to see it. Oh, wow. uh, but like we came in hot and we were, we were, we were obnoxious and we were, annoying and it's like it was so funny because i'm like picturing my parents just sitting there it's like yeah do you have old footage of you in the band like that yeah oh my god you have to thank god yeah i do bring it in so it it was like nobody was there i remember that was a really weird day it was like there was some crazy accident that like nobody could get to the show so everybody came really late to the show and it was like you were really humid hot and all this stuff and it was just like all this weird energy there, but uh, my mom sitting up front, you know, with this VHS, like Come on. filming us, like like screaming and, and rolling on the ground and Come doing on, stupid Look, shit. You're a dad, bro. Yeah. If you see your kid do something that they've worked hard at and they're proud of, and it's something that you're not into, like let's say, I don't know, your son's like, Doing ballet and he's like super good at it, you know. And that's not it's something the equivalent. Yeah. You're always you're still your kid, you know. Right. You're still gonna be. Like, I mean, oh you God. say that. That's a good dad. I mean, I think that there's not a lot of parents that would probably. Well, I know you guys sit, are good dads. Yeah, right? sitting yeah. through that. Like I totally get that you guys would do that. But oh, but I mean, they're that. definitely chiming in of like they're a little. Oh, bro. You know, like oh my God, my ears were hurting and ringing. Oh. Like, Dude, well, my son did robotics. I had no, I didn't know what the hell robotics was. I, could, I didn't do none of nothing of it. But when I went to go watch it, you better believe I was like, I'm gonna buy the T-shirt. Yeah. I'm going to have a flag. I'm thinking, I don't know what this is, but do I get to wave a flag or something to support? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Dude. And uh, it was funny because yeah. I, I was talking to all the dads. Show up with the, a ribbon. And, I, was, yeah. I was talking to all the dads of the other kids doing robotics, and they're all in like they're all like tech geniuses and tech people. Yeah. And they're like, so what do you do? And I'm like, oh, I'm in fitness. <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't know what they're doing yeah, right now, but it's I feel like that changes, cool. though, because you're probably, at that point, you're probably in your 20s, right? You're not a yeah. teenager, are you? Yeah, yeah you're, you're in your 20s. 20s, so that's a little bit different, right? It's like one yeah. thing, like supporting your kid doing ballet gymnastics robotics what like yeah. that but then they hit that 20 year old mark where they're going to go off and do whatever the hell they well, want i mean how many okay how many of your family members listen to the goddamn show to our show yeah oh my uh not my immediate yeah just, me neither. oh just, my mom just did courtney really my mom no. did my yeah. mom did and that was like late to the party late and it was- to the party and i've sent them and they'll only listen to like bishop baron or like one of the you know more cause my family was really religious and that was like the whole thing like we talked about this yeah. for so that was my spin too by the way so we were in a metal band but we were also like playing a lot of churches and we were like what yeah yeah we we would like practice in the chapel at, at my at my college and like these these people would come out that were like you know studying to become through seminary to become like preachers and everything and oh, we wow. were like like playing really like like borderline <laughs> satanic stuff. Wow. <laughs> but with a spin, like a positive spin. Yeah. And so I was trying to like, Jesus loves yeah. you. <laughs> it wasn't that obvious, dude. It was, it was just more uplifting. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was like, and I was trying to sell my dad on that. Like, this is kind of like a ministry. You know, we're helping these, <laughs> these kids, these, you know, these, <laughs> these youth that are like really, uh, struggling and you know we're gonna so, fight fire with fire yeah we're going dad. out into the world and you know and so he was always like dude i just didn't see it no my, we're just screaming my mom right out the gates listened to our show which you guys know what our episodes used to be like early on so oh, she did i don't know if you remember you she me did that. and then she stopped because it's too much she just like uh i don't know if i want to know all the stuff you guys are talking about all this show. but she yeah. did listen i think my mom started too and then she stopped really really yeah. quick it, did, it only took a couple episodes for her to be like i yeah. can't listen you want to know how you want to know how I've, i uh i have so i have cousins and, and family members that i don't you know they're just they're distant in the sense that i don't ever i don't talk to them i haven't talked to them for a long time but we're family oh, yeah yeah and i get messages from them because i was on uh relevant radio which is a catholic oh yeah it's a uh so so they wanted me on to talk about fitness but they are a catholic uh syndicated radio show so not like a recorded podcast actual radio show where they're like okay you're gonna be on in five four three like that type of deal yeah yeah so i have cousins calling my parents going 
oh my congratulations on your son and they're like what oh i heard him on relevant radio my mom's like you've been doing it for like seven years <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> but i heard him on the you know on the ch on the church channel or whatever yeah it's like you gotta you gotta go into their uh pool you yeah. know you gotta then they're like oh wow dude, you're a big deal dude i gotta tell you guys this story that maybe Doug's not going to like, I'm going to tell, but it's hilarious. <laughs> so, Doug's eyebrows. No, dude, it's hilarious. So I, I'm not going to tell too many details because I don't want this person to be called out. Friend of mine, okay? Friend of mine, hilarious story. So him and his wife were getting kind of, you know, frisky with each other or whatever, and they pull out the sex toys, and she, she goes to use a penis pump on them. So- People don't know. Penis pump goes on a penis. It's a vacuum, whatever. I think it's self-explanatory. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he puts it on. Okay, you attach it. There's like yeah. this lever. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like a preacher and self-explanatory. Go ahead, Doug. There's go. a picture Keep of it anyway. next to me right now. Yeah. 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 Uh, so she does it on him, turns, you know, starts hitting the, the pressure or okay, whatever. Okay, okay. And the, it, uh, something happened where it got caught on his like his, uh, his his sack, oh, no. and his ball went <laughs> through. Boom, <laughs> boom. <laughs> yes. So, because the whole, again, he was trying to explain to me the hole at the uh, bottom where, you know, your, your penis goes through or whatever, it's kind of yeah. small. Yeah. Well, the pressure was so much that it sucked his ball through. So that, he says, bro, it's like I got kicked in the nuts. And Ooh. then he goes, and then I'm like freaking out. She, she takes off the pressure, but now I got to pull it back through the other end. He goes, bro, it's the worst thing ever. He's like, that ruined everything. <laughs> I was dying. <laughs> Of like, I cannot imagine how this must have been. And he's, I'm like, did you hear it? And he goes, oh, she heard it. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever, I don't know if I've ever known anybody that actually use use that as like a sex toy yeah, prop. Uh, that's that's typically a the guy that's one. using it to like either help with erectile dysfunction or actually on the I mean, mission people for use anything absolutely grow. People you know? use anything as just, just grab it. <laughs> that's true. I mean, out of the is drawer. there anything that people yeah. haven't used <laughs> for sex? Yeah, Come on now. you've seen ER rooms. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, he was like, dude, he goes, it's like I got kicked in the nuts. And then the be the best part was when he was like, I'm like, oh shit, you know. But then she turned off the pressure. You're okay. He goes, no, bro. He goes, it took ten minutes to pull it back out the other end. Oh my god, because That's... it's such a tight, like there's a ring or whatever. He's trying to explain. It's like there's a ring, and he goes, and the pressure is what pulled it through. And he goes to get it back out the other end. He goes, like he goes, eventually, I, I kind of I had to use scissors to try and figure out how to cut this thing. And was, oh my god. Terrible. Oh, I'm like, sorry, bro. Sorry. Makes, yeah. You were finally going to get something. That it didn't <laughs> makes happen. me want to cross my legs. Yeah. It didn't, it didn't work out for you. Anyway, <laughs> along those lines. Uh, <laughs> along those lines. Let's hear it. <laughs> more? Let's hear it. So what have you been reading more? and watching lately? So this may, be, this may be a little um, sad, uh, but did you guys know that THC, if now they have studies, this is now the second study I think that's come out that's shown this, THC affects gene transcription or, or the way genes are expressed in your sperm. Uh, so a man who smokes a lot of weed or consumes a lot of weed with a lot of THC, he will get his woman pregnant and risks for certain things go up because it changed his sperm. What are the risks? Uh, more neurological um, issues, more behavioral type issues. So things that have to do with brain development huh. because of that, wow. because it changes the sperm. How shitty is that? It sounds very correlation, not causation type of deal. No, they that's okay. So here, you're, I'm glad you said that. So one of the challenges with studies on certain things like this is yeah. there's a healthy or non-healthy user right, bias. Right, right. So like people who are more likely to, you know, right. Smoke people weed. who smoke weed also eat like shit or lazy, don't exercise. Right, right. right. Therefore, yeah. No, they've connected it to the THC. Oh, interesting. The THC itself affects that. Now on the flip end of that. CBD seems to, in other cases, mitigate some of the mitigate some of it, and CBD doesn't work the same. T there's a CB1 and CB2 receptors that uh, cannabinoids will attach to. CBD doesn't attach to either one, but what CBD does is somehow allow your body to utilize its own natural endocannabinoids more effectively. This is why CBD's got really good therapeutic effects, whereas THC far more acute and then lots of potential negatives. So if you want to gain the benefit of cannabinoids, and let's say you've read that, oh, weed helps with anxiety, depression, inflammation, go with the other cannabinoids. Stay away from the THC unless you need something acute. Well, what do like you think about this? And you're the one who actually taught me this. Um, and I normally have gummies. I don't have gummies to do it now. So I, I just use the the NED, the full spectrum instead. But you are the one that that 
had, and this was before this study. Yes, you had shared before about the 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 positive things of CBD, the negative things that we've seen potentially with THC, and so just for a safe precaution, you've always told me try and keep it a one to one ratio. Yes. Mm -hmm. So when I when now what I do is like I just have a habit of like oh if I'm going to smoke or I'm going to take this edible that's high in THC, then I also take a the full spectrum hemp or I take a gummy yes. that's high in CBD. Uh, to try and counter it. Yes, because the, the, they'll show that the memory, the short-term memory loss effects that come from a lot of THC, a lot of that gets mitigated if you combine it with uh, other cannabinoids. Yeah. Um, so I, it's, I highly recommend that. And for people who want the benefits of cannabinoids but don't want any of those potential negatives, like if you're not just trying to get high, mm -hmm. if you want to, you know, for inflammation, for anxiety, for that kind of stuff, go with... Uh, you know, hemp oil extracts, really cool, good quality one. I mean, we work with a company called Ned. It's the best one I've ever seen or tried. It's the best one I've ever seen tested. They do third-party testing. Go with that because you're not getting the THC. You're getting all the other benefits. So those negatives uh, probably not going to show up, at least so far in studies we've seen. That's that actually stuff. how, so I've, you know, originally when we first worked with them, this was before they had their Mellow product and I'd use it at nighttime a lot. I've now become like every day I use the mellow before bed. Oh, right. So the, the, but what I use the, now the full spectrum dropper for is exactly that. like I, my preferred way of taking in uh, THC is, is smoking joints, which I know is not ideal, but I also just make it a habit that I, I do a couple of those droppers when I sit down to do that, to try and ho hopefully I don't cancel some of that out. That's what my, it my just thought always process reminds me with like plants, how, um, you know, nature sort of has that balance already, right. like established. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, and we like concentrate it, but then you know the antidote, you know, to the the negatives, like it's already there. We we extracted it from it, and it's like you know, like to Such try and get point. back to balance. It's well, natural marijuana used to when it wasn't bred. To yeah, be used super to be like high back in the '60s, it was like six percent, eight percent. It was very cracks me up. If you ever yeah. heard, you see, it's funny. You you talk to an old timer. All the stuff that we used to have back in the days was that was the real shit. Blah, blah, blah. Like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, it was bro. like, like, no it was like a, THC in it. Bro, it was so it. weak. Yeah. It was so weak. Well, you'd have to smoke like a couple joints. Yeah. 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 I know. Look, I know in my experience, when I really started researching it because I had a family member with cancer, it, I would go to the cannabis clubs. And those are these were legal cannabis clubs. So this is already a market above what, what I experienced as a kid when it was like full on illegal. If you saw anything over 15% THC, that was a big deal. Yeah. Go now. Yeah, yeah. Everything's, everything's over 20, everything's 22, 25. Yeah, yeah. I've seen 30% THC. Yeah, yeah. Like, what the yeah, hell is, is going on? We keep breeding it to be super, super, super strong. Well, yeah, and then, and then the, that's why that market got popular with all the waxes and stuff like that that everybody's doing. I mean, that stuff is like 70, 80, yeah. 90, even have 90 or clear and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That gets up in the high 90s. Like, Crazy. it's just yeah. insane. Let's oh, check, you're weak. check this out. Yeah. So this is uh, just to stay on that negative tip. So <laughs> I'm going to read to you guys. Uh, some studies have come out on the effects of the school closures on children that we did oh, during the God. pandemic, oh, no. which I've we've said oh, since day one <laughs> was a, a knee-jerk fear-based reaction that yeah. we all speculated would have far worse repercussions. And sure enough, that's what they're showing. So this is a quote. School closures in the U.S. have had a devastating impact on children's mental health, development, and future earnings potential. And like we've said before, it's not just now. It's what, how it's going to affect the future, right? Mm -hmm. According to data released last month by the National Center for Education Statistics, 70% of U.S. public schools have reported an increase in students seeking mental health services. Okay? So 70% increase. Another study reported that mental stressors brought about by school closures, and they did some calculations here, would destroy about seven times more years of life than the lockdowns saved. In other words, the however many infections are prevented and whatever, it, it was worse what we did uh, with the lockdowns. And it's you know, fear-based, knee-jerk kind of reactions. It's crazy this information is there and it's readily available and yet people still just don't want to hear it. You know, no. And like still... You know, and it's a leadership problem. It's that's where I get the most frustrated. I don't know, dude. I, you, I, I don't know if it's just a leadership thing. I don't know if you can blame this on fucking the presidency or, or who's running the government right now. It's like uh, this conversation. Yeah, this is, this I had a really, CDC, I've had a really difficult everybody. conversations in the last month with like even my my good friends who like we don't see eye to eye on a lot of stuff like that. It's like I can't even share like studies like this coming out. It's just they've. They've already doubled down so hard. It's they, hard to reverse that they agree. 
yeah. with what we did before or thought it was the best can thing. I, bro, can I tell you guys the biggest, like, what's a You got to be objective. You got to pull yourself It's out crazy. Of a, these are like, these are intelligent people I'm talking about, yeah. too. Here's a huge, like, you want to talk about reversal of public opinion? Uh, five years ago, just five years ago and before, you could not criticize on a national stage teachers. You could not. They were, couldn't touch teachers because they help our kids. They take care of our kids. It was like, if you went up there and said, teachers are messing up, they're not doing a good job, like you wouldn't get elected, right? Okay. Here's what happened during the pandemic. A lot of people saw how their teachers were teaching kids during it, didn't like it. Yeah. So that's one. But here's the big one. The teachers unions were the ones that were pushing for the long, uh, the public school teacher well, unions. Definitely here in California. That was they were pushing problem. the hardest for these lockdowns. Yeah. And a lot of people are, are upset about that. And yeah. that does not look good because you see the private school teachers were not doing that. Well, and I mean, this is, it's probably because they didn't get paid if they didn't go to work. Right. So they're like, we need to open up. So this does not look good on teachers unions. And, and you're going to start to see now that that there's cracks in that particular voting block that you'd see in politics because we've, of all we've that. needed to disrupt oh. the education system for a long time anyways. I, I think so. But I think, whoa, that was, we really allowed our fear to, to take over oh, and man. we did a lot of damage to our the kids. Third rail now is even talking about the effectiveness of the vaccines. Like we can't even talk about that oh, or yeah. even evaluate it or even be objective about it Yeah, because well, it's been so pushed. Yeah. I, well, I, I think it's going to be very interesting over the next 10 to 15 years Looking back, that's when we're going to be able to say, well, I don't, I think. Well, unfortunately, time. yeah. Like, but, but it's a leadership issue to me because the, it's their responsibility to slow down and, and evaluate long term, not just immediate knee jerk reactions, like, you know, to appease the mob. It, it, true leadership leads you and, and, and reassures everybody, you know, that this is a good plan long term. Doesn't get you elected. I, if you if you were up on stage, I told you that the other day. What uh, that's what Patrick Brett David was talking about. He said made that case. It won't he get said, you elected. So he said like if the the right person right that was that made all those right shame on us dude, right, for just, having no that. that and that's where I put it back on us. Of course, and that's where I put it back on like when I say like my friends and stuff like that. It's like they're that's not it's not leadership. Thing. They, they want these people. They vote for these people. Imagine, they're the ones making that choice. Imagine you had two politicians. Yeah, imagine I if get a, that. imagine if obesity was like the biggest national. Uh, issue like everybody wants to vote on obesity right yeah. which it should be but it's not but let's just say it was and you had two politicians <clears throat> one on stage going all right here's the deal guys here's a solution to obesity all of you are going to have to make better choices with your nutrition yeah. <laughs> you're all going to have to exercise more <laughs> we're, you're going to have to make behavioral changes and then yeah. the other politician goes we're going to put forth a three trillion dollar solve obesity bill yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> who do you think is going to yeah. get elected yeah. You just got to take three shots. That's all you have to do. Throw or whatever. <laughs> Throw all the imaginary money at it. Yeah. We're yeah. going to fund it. And by, oh, by the way, you're not going to pay for it. The super rich yeah. are going to pay. Or whatever. They're going to say, we'll print money. But think about it, right? Nobody wants to elect the person that's going to say, hey, it's a really scary thing that's happening right now. You guys all need to kind of like take your own risks. And I don't think this is a smart idea because of whatever. It's the guy who gets elected or the girl who gets elected is the one that says, no, here's all the solutions. Yeah. Do this, do that. Free do pizza this. on Fridays. Yeah. That's who wins. Totally. All right, check this out. There's a company we work with that makes a product called Masszymes, uh, and taking Masszymes daily helps top off your enzyme levels and replace the enzymes that your body may no longer be producing. So this means you'll have better digestion, better utilization of proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. Basically, take these with your meals, get better digestion and better utilization of those nutrients. I take them with every single meal that I eat, and I've noticed a significant improvement in how I feel uh, reduction in things like bloating, gas, and of course, improvements in digestion. So go check this company out. Go to masszymes.com. That's M-A-S-S-Z-Y-M-E-S.com forward slash mind pump. And then use the code mind pump 10 for 10% off your order. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Valerie from Florida. Hey, Valerie. How can we help you? Hey, oh my gosh. I can't believe I'm on the show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a new fan fan um so i love you guys and i um my husband comes home and hears me talking or he hears me listening like he's like what are you listening to i'm like my broadcast <laughs> <laughs> awesome <laughs> right i realized later that that was not such a great term to call you my bros because of the bro science and all that <laughs> <laughs> that's all right we don't mind coming from you yep. what's your question how can we help you <laughs> i have to find another term of endearment uh, okay, so my question is trying to find the best way for me to do a cut. 
So I have been working out consistently for about 15 years, but I did the whole high rep, low weight, taking classes, that kind of thing. And I'm 40 years old. I'm 5'4", and I'm currently around 117 or 118. Um, And probably the beginning of this year, I started listening to your podcast and reading books and realizing like, oh, wait, I should be um, eating tons of protein. I should be doing um, progressive overload and lifting heavy and all that stuff. So I started that this year. But um, let's see, a couple of years ago, I started cutting out, cutting down on my calories to probably around 2000 calories a day. And I went from around 140 to, and I got down to 111. I was probably like 19 or 20 percent body fat. Um, I've been eating a little bit more because 2,000 calories is hard for me to maintain. Um, and I'm currently probably at like 2,250. Um, but I've gained, you know, six or seven of those pounds back. And I know some of it is fat because um, my waist has gotten um, an inch or two bigger. So, um, yeah, I guess, so my question is about doing a mini cut. Um, I'm starting to feel fluffy. Um, in the years that I um, lost the weight, I had cut out starches. I thought that you were supposed to do that. I've recently added them back. Um, but like, I'm, and I've added creatine to my diet, but I'm, I'm starting to feel fluffy. And I thought maybe I could do a mini cut because I really don't like being in a cut. But I was thinking maybe decrease to about 1500 calories for maybe four weeks. Um, and then I was wondering as far as like the water weight goes, when I, I think, which I, I kind of know the answer. I, I think I know what you're going to say, but um, to tap into the fat stores in that short four week period, should you try to get rid of the glycogen and the water weight by reducing carbs and creatine before you start your cut? So that you're just tapping into fat stores. Yeah. You're overthinking it. And yeah. the answer is no. Um, creatine will help keep muscle while you cut. So do not stop taking creatine because you're trying to get lean. And any water that you gain from creatine is intracellular. Mm. So it's just, it's, mm-hmm. it's in the it's, muscle. It's in the muscle, which means they'll just feel more firm. Um, it's not the same thing as bloat. So don't, don't cut the creatine. Keep it, especially when you're, when you're dieting and you're, and you're cutting down. As far as a, a shortcut is concerned, you can totally do that. Um, you look very lean. You look really good. So I don't know. How far do you want to go? Like, would you know what body fat percentage you want to aim for? I think I'm probably at 21%. Um, I, basically, I want to <laughs> I want to stay in my same pant size. But, man, if I could, like, get eat 2,500 calories <laughs> a day. <laughs> like, well, I, I, I have a big appetite. And even... I don't, I don't know how I'm going to even do 1500 to, cause even 2000 is hard sometimes, you know? Yeah. I don't well, know. It I, sounds like the reverse diet angle is the direction we yeah, should go. I was just gonna say. And if you do a cut, I would do just a, a short mini cut and then go right back into a, a reverse diet. It sounds like the goal would be, can we get you up to 2,500 calories and maintain the, the body that you want? So, I mean, yeah, that, uh, so that's what, kind of what are you doing at the, uh, but I feel fluffy now. I feel like I've, put you know five six seven pounds on doing that yeah well, what, you, okay, what, you, what program are you following of ours right now <laughs> don't yell at me i don't um <laughs> I, ha- I, I, I there's another um person that you've had on your show that i, I actually got his per um his program first i got his book i heard about him before i heard y'all and so i was doing his um but I haven't bought one of yours yet. Yeah. So well, no. Yeah, if, we're gonna fix that then. If so, he's yeah. been on our show, he probably has a good program. But um, no, one's, our program's always better. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <no. laughs> um, I'll we're, send. I'll send you one of ours. I think Maps on a Bulk would be yeah, good for you. Yeah. Yeah. And it, you know, you can do a shortcut if you want. You look, you're 21 percent body fat. You're lean. Um, I, I think. I mean, honestly, I I think you should do a slow bulk. And yes. And in, in in other words, slowly increase your calories and try and build muscle. Now the whole thing about feeling fluffy. So I've trained I've trained clients for a long time. And whenever I hear a woman, especially when I can see them in front of me like you say, I'm feeling fluffy, I'm always a little skeptical, not because uh, I'm trying to say you don't feel that way, but you know, building a little muscle, 
uh, you know, feeling a little fuller in terms of the glycogen and muscle. Like sometimes women can confuse that with gaining body fat. Right. Again, I can see you right now. You look lean. You look fit. So, um, I mean, and again, it's your body. So if you want to reverse that, you know, kind of cut a little bit, that's totally fine. But 21% body fat is a great body fat percentage to be at. I've had the same experience with women. And it's, it's a lot of times it's like when you put your jeans on, when you put the clothes on, yeah. it's a little tighter, but like, you know, as you're gaining muscle and building muscle, like that's just going to happen. Yeah. Does your, is your husband saying, man, you look good. Is he, is he commenting on how you look and saying everything looks great? Uh he doesn't, he liked me in my other styles. He was fine with it. So, um, I just feel fluffy in my belly cause I've gained an inch or two. So I know that that's probably fat because I, I think I heard on your show, like you don't, gain, you don't gain size in your belly. So usually not, but also that could also be a lot of different things. Uh, it could be bloat. It could yeah. be, you know, digestion. It could be a lot of different things, yeah. but nonetheless, uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with doing like a four week, you know, 1700 calorie cut. Well, we just, we just sent you over maps anabolic. If you were my client, what I would like to do, cause I actually would like you fed in calorie wise in phase one. So I would actually try and get you to increase calories a little bit for the first four weeks. And then when we move to phase two, I'd let you do a little mini cut. And then we go back to a surplus again in phase three. So that's what it would look like with me. If we were to do this, we would run. I would try and get you to increase a couple hundred calories, so one to two hundred calories a day from where you're at currently. So like twenty three fifty or twenty four fifty, right? And like then and then follow Maps Anabolic to a T for phase one. When we transition out of phase one and go into phase two, I would put you into a cut. So now we would reduce your calories down, maybe down to two thousand or nineteen hundred for that phase, and then put you back up on the on back towards the increase on the final phase and see where you're, see where you're at. I would really like to see you just try and build some muscle right now. I think that is, if our ultimate goal is, can we keep the size and look of kind of where you're at, but then feel a little bit leaner, but keep you and, and, and also be able to eat like 2,500 calories, then the ultimate goal is to speed your metabolism. Yeah. Nothing is going to do that better than yeah. us building muscle. But the hard part, and I think the part that Sal's kind of alluding to is that the psychological part that you're going to have to go to battle through as you're going it's and it's the reverse for someone like like me who was the I was afraid of being skinny. So when I go on a cut, I freak out as soon as I start looking smaller and smaller. And then I always want to go back the other way, calorie wise. When we're on this reverse diet and I'm asking you to eat more calories, and you get you put on your jeans one day and they feel a little tighter, not to freak out and go, oh, I got to go the other direction. In fact, I would the main thing I'd be communicating is let's just focus on strength. Let's just look at your lifts. Let's try and get stronger. That's our goal of this program. Let's get stronger, get stronger, get stronger. That's all I'm going to speak to while also trying to slowly increase calories. If we can increase calories by a few hundred and you can get stronger, I really don't give a shit about how your genes feel temporarily. I don't really don't give a shit about where the scale is saying up or down a couple pounds. That's what I want to hear. And then I will I would cut you from there and then get you to the, 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 the exact size you want to be. That was gold. What he just told you was gold. I think if you followed that, I think you'd be very happy. Okay, can you do MAPS Anabolic at home? All I have is a pair of Select Techs and like a ball. I have a, a bar that you can put the Select Techs on. The problem with squatting is I'm not strong enough to lift it over my head. Yeah. Like if I put the 50s on each side, my legs can handle that, but I can't get in and out of position like that. So we have we have a dumbbell mod that comes with it. So there's a there's a there's a mod modification so you could do it. But now that you say that to me, so I do you ever barbell back squat or deadlift? Have you ever or, and it's because you were you told me you're like the high intensity class girl. So are, have you not really done like a barbell lifting? Not really. I do free weights and then I've oh, done gosh. classes. See, I would I would I would love to do that with. You. I mean, where you're already at with your experience, how good your physique already is. I mean, you we have the dumbbell mod follow it you're fine but yeah if you joined a gym and and, and followed and did some barbell training I, it would blow your mind yeah okay but you don't have to we have the maps anabolic has the dumbbell mods so you totally can yeah. did to run it at home i totally think everything we said still applies and you'll get great benefits from it but knowing your past the type of training you've done in the past and what you're missing and kind of where you want to go as far as metabolism goes and and built sculpting your physique and everything man Getting you to to barbell, you know, squat and deadlift would be just phenomenal for your body. Totally. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does the, does the program have nutrition guidance in there or no. Mm -hmm. no? No, we we don't do any nutrition because that's so individualized. I mean, even the conversation we're having right now, like what we're saying to you, would be completely different for some 
somebody else who's running maps and a ball. So there isn't that. What we can do is this is I'll have Doug throw you in the the private forum. So you oh, have, okay. so you have access to that. And in there you have our community plus us floating around. So as you're going through and you're manipulating your diet, feel free to to post and share and and get feedback there. Yep. Oh my gosh. Awesome. Thank y'all so much. Yes. Thanks, Valerie. All yeah, right. thank you. Bye. 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 You know what's funny is uh after you, you train for so long, there's certain keywords that when I hear, I know like, okay, let me, and the, right. one of them is fluffy. Yeah. When I hear a woman say, I feel fluffy, I'd say a decent chunk of the time, they're just uncomfortable with building a little bit of yeah. muscle or, you know, creatine made their weight go up two pounds because they have more intracellular fluid and they freak out a little bit. You know what I mean? She you know? looks so good already. Totally. And the That's fact that say. she looks like that and she has never really experienced barbell lifting. Oh, she's going to get blown away. Dude. Yeah. She would just, I, I mean- would be a fun client to train uh on a, a like little legit bulk like let's put some let's let's not worry about the jeans right now let's not worry about the scale let's you're not allowed strong. to look at, yeah let's just see let's see where your squat is day 1 and let's see where we can get it let's see where your deadlift is day if she's 1 she's already eating 2250 at her size and she's tiny and she and looking the way she does and her body fat percent you know how how much her metabolism can get I, ramped up. Yes, yeah. yes. I mean, she could be like twenty hundred yeah. calories. You know, yes. no problem. She yes. wanted to get up to what twenty five hundred. Yeah, yeah, easy, like, easily, easy. easily. Yeah. Our next caller is Brad from Indiana. Brad, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, what's up, guys? Um, first off, I just want to say this is awesome to be on here. Uh, I was looking for a fitness podcast uh, about a year and a half ago, and I stumbled across you guys. Uh, first fifty minutes, you guys were talking about like aliens and politics and i was like <laughs> had to make sure i was listening to a fitness uh podcast but um no you guys are amazing um so i just want to say thank you for that um so basically uh i'm 5 10 22 years old i'm 175 pounds now and uh i'm about two years um off of playing college basketball and um Doing, when I stopped playing basketball, I started doing these more hypertrophy bodybuilding style of training, and um, it really carried over to the basketball court. Um, I still play in open gyms and in leagues, and uh, I found myself, you know, driving into the lane and really putting shoulder into guys, moving guys, and it uh, really helped out my basketball. Um, I've never been in a better position basketball-wise. Um, so my question is, is why do you think I've seen so much carryover to the basketball court by doing more of a split hypertrophy, mind muscle connection style of training? And then the second part would be, uh, you know, I aspire to be a basketball coach and uh, a, a strength trainer. And um, would it be bad for me to want to incorporate this style of training um, into my athletes? No, that's a, yeah, that's a great, great question. question. And this is, uh, I, you totally, muscle. I totally remember this uh, going through this, right? So I never lifted the, at all really going through high school, played basketball too. And I was a better basketball player in my mid-20s than I was when I was playing organized ball because I built all this muscle. And I wasn't playing as much basketball, mm -hmm. uh, but it was my frame was missing that. I was missing that size and strength. And so that's what you're seeing right now translate on the court is you've got the skills. You've been playing ball for so long that you've already got great skills in the sport. What your body was missing was that that strength and size and the explosiveness. Like I, I could dunk the basketball with way more authority in my mid-20s than I could when I was 17, 18 playing basketball every day. So uh, I could totally relate to that. And I remember thinking like, God damn, I missed out by not – training like this when i was younger yeah. and incorporating it so absolutely and it just goes to show that uh if you're always doing like strength driven um type of workouts and you haven't actually like gone and changed up and shook it up in terms of like the style of training like there's a lot of carryover in, in, in translation in terms of like the benefits of seeking a different adaptation so you know your body given this Get, getting this novel stimulus and also gaining size and strength, you know, is definitely going to contribute towards a, a better, well-rounded athlete. So, yeah. you know, it, a lot of the times it's, it's, it's the opposite is the case too, like with bodybuilders and that never do any kind of powerlifting or never do any kind of, you know, functional training. So there's just, you know, we, we get in these camps and I think that, um, you know, that's what we always try to address on the show. Now, now I'm going to be the turd in the punch bowl here. So I'm going to give you some caveats here. Okay. Because okay. what you what you just experienced is great, but what I don't want you to do is marry what happened yeah. and then apply it as a coach to every athlete. Yeah. Because 
strength uh, when you sacrifice skill isn't very valuable when it comes to sports. So if your basketball skill decreased, but you're bigger and stronger, you're going to be not as effective on the court. So remember that as a coach. So don't trade right. strength for skill. Number two, right. you did a bodybuilding style workout, which made you bigger and stronger, which is better than what you were doing before. But sports specific functional training is even better than that. Okay, so okay. if you're training basketball players and the option is zero strength training and bodybuilding, bodybuilding is better than zero. Yeah. But what's better than bodybuilding is more specific type of training for those athletes for their sport. So there's going to be more functional. Right. There's going to be things like isometrics and plyometrics. Yeah. You're focused more on movement than you are on mind-to-muscle connection for the most part. So consider that when you are coaching other people. Well, think of it too like this. So um, you know, the majority of what you're going to focus on is a sports-specific training, but you know, in terms of phasing, so this is why we phase through our programming. Um, you're going to lean heavily on that and come back to it, but you're going to interrupt it with hypertrophy-style yeah, training. And this is what good. I did with my athletes, uh, and they did receive a lot of benefit from that because, um, you know, two, besides that, like it – like mass building is is a part of that in terms of like certain sports more than others, right? Like if it's, you know, something that is going to benefit your specific sport, which basketball being very explosive, you know, you're going to be shouldering people, you're going to have to get positions. So, you know, being able to have a bit of mass and strength in those positions is going to be beneficial. Absolutely. And then, you know, when you notice that you were bigger and heavier, but you could move better, yeah, it's because your strength to rate ratio got better. And the reason why I'm, com I'm I'm communicating that is because it could also go in the other way. Right? Well, yeah, so the example of that would be comparing what I was saying at my, when I was 24, 25, after just a couple of years of strength training, and then me at 30. Me at 30 was not better. Because you were me a bodybuilder. Because yeah. I continued to keep bodybuilding and bodybuilding, and then eventually that uh, my physique looked way better, but then it took away from my skill. So I can't move at you know my late 20s to 30 as I did in my mid 20s and that's why why that was was like you I played so much basketball I had already acquired the skill mm -hmm. I had no real strength training I started strength training like a bodybuilder just like you and the carry over to that like translated to the court but then fast forward 2 3 4 more years later and now the right. the skill starts diminishing and I become more and more yeah. of a bodybuilder so it's about strength to weight ratio right so if you double yeah. your strength but you triple your body weight, you're actually weaker as an athlete. Does that make sense? So even though you got stronger, yeah, okay, so keep that in mind when you're training yourself and your and, and other athletes, and, and that'll guide you in the right direction. Okay, um, and part of the reason I, like, I'm asking this question is like, I remember like our style of training that we did in high school and in college, and it was very explosive, like split snatch, and, um, but like, they would take like a traditional like bilateral shoulder press on a bench and they would turn it into this like get into a split stance lunge and then you might have a kettlebell and then somebody might be punching your abs while you're doing it or something like yeah, that's <laughs> and, I, and that's great for like that's great for like balance and like no, and, no, I, under, and I understood all that but it, no. in terms of actually building a 3d more rounded delt like i didn't really feel like it helped no, and for really like a hard gainer like me and like a lot of high schoolers, especially at my high school, I feel like they could have benefited so much more from doing like basic, like no yeah. basketball athletes ever going to do like a rear delt yeah. fly, right? That's a coach like, throwing spaghetti at the wall. Yeah, no, you, you're where your head is at. You get you, you're, you're, you're thinking in the right direction. Actually, that split stance press with someone punching your stomach is, is stupid as fuck. That was like a terrible idea. Right. No matter how they tried they to just, just go too far and it, it yeah, just start yeah, throwing yeah. everything at everything. Yeah, and your and and those athletes would have to Justin's point totally benefited from a phase of just pure strength training, mm -hmm. just pure mm -hmm. traditional squatting, deadlifting, overhead pressing, even though that it looks nothing like a move on basketball, but because those young athletes have none of that foundational strength or they lack that, they would get great carryover totally. by, by ha running a phase of, of just pure good old strength training with your basic compound lifts. That's right. Right. That makes sense. Yep. All right, man. Yep. Thanks for calling in. Bro. All right. Thank you, guys. Yep. You Appreciate it. it. Thank you. you. It. Yeah, I'm glad you said what you said about your experience. Yeah. Because I mean, you could, I mean, because he's experiencing like, oh my God, it's amazing. Yeah. But I could already, you know, I could, you know, see that oh, uh, he falls in love no, with it. No, it's a bell curve. Yeah. Like you're like you're explaining it. And I remember like, because my intention had nothing to do with basketball. I, I, you know, I left playing basketball in high school and now I'm in my 20s and I'm on this mission to build a physique. And I'm like, 
trying to build as much muscle as I can. I'm still, I'm actually around his weight and everything, a little bit taller and skinnier. And I go to play basketball one day and just recognize how explosive I'm on the yeah. court and strong. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I'm not even playing basketball right now. But I was, but I was lacking that. I didn't yeah. squat. I never squat. I never squatted in high school. I never deadlifted in high school. I never did any of those those functional strength type movements. And they do have great carryover yeah. in the sport. Well, this is so nuanced because um, you know you get benefit from that right away, and so then you you want to kind of lean further into that, thinking that like hypertrophy, this is what was missing, and so now this is like really benefiting my sport. There's a window to this, so yep. you know if this was something like like to your point of having the skill already to then build on top of that, yes. it made a huge difference in comparison to a bodybuilder, let's say that just keeps bodybuilding and then tries to do athletics. Like yeah. there's so you know in terms of like just single joint. Uh, focus and, and not, you know, having that kind of movement focus style training where, you know, you need to get the body to, to be in symphony. Okay. And, and so this is just one of those things, the difference of athletic training is you need to be able to get, you need to be able to organize every part of your body at one time. Yep, yep, and yeah. so that, that is the highest priority. And now what we do is, is, you know, we phase this through. So you get benefits of other styles of training, but very briefly, yeah. we always come back to that. Our next caller is Matt from Florida. Matt, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey, guys. Um, just a pleasure to be here. For the, um, first things first, I want to ask Justin how he grew such a magnificent beard. Uh, you know, tiny beard. He likes to keep it tiny. It's my though. mama. <laughs> yeah, I got it from my mama. You're, you got your beard from your mom? <laughs> <laughs> wow. 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 Shots fired, mom. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it happens. Uh, but for real, you guys have um, helped me through some tough times. Um the last few months have been tough, just like I'm a college student, so just stuff gets crazy. But the one constant has been listening to you guys every day. Awesome. So I really appreciate it. Um, so the premise of my question, you guys have probably read it, um, but over the past like year and a half, 15 months about, I've increased my metabolism from 2,800 to like 4,700. Wow. I know wow. it sounds like kind of insane. Like you think like, oh, you probably just like look um, sloppy now, but I've gained a good amount of size and I've stayed fairly lean. I think I've had reverse body dysmorphia this whole time. Cause my friends are starting to be like, Oh, you're not really that lean, but I, I, you could still see like four of my abs. So I can still consider myself like leaner than pretty much most of the population. So basically where the problem lies is that right now I'm in running maps anabolic. I'm in phase one, but I'm doing a powerlifting meet in December. So I wanted to, Obviously, powerlift, it would be um, to my benefit to be in a surplus, but I feel as if I bulk throughout anabolic, my metabolism is my metabolism's going to be above 5K once I get into powerlifting. And with school starting, it's just going to be like kind of astronomical to actually try to eat in, in a surplus when my metabolism's cranked up that high. So well, you know, I got a question for yeah, you yeah. first, okay? Um, did you just get back from Mardi Gras or a spiritual retreat? <laughs> I'm actually in Italy, but I wish I was at Mardi Gras. Okay. okay, I just wanted to clear that up. No, okay, so wait. Uh, uh, you, uh, important question. Important yeah, question. You want you want to start the prep in eight weeks, or the meet is in eight weeks? Let me get that clear. So I under. So. Um, I wish I knew the exact date because I was looking into buying powerlift because I don't. I have anabolic but not powerlift, and the weeks don't really coincide as well. That's another question. But the meet is in December. I don't know when yet. Oh, okay. So we have so plenty of time. Yeah. So I actually would run a cut right now. So why yeah. don't yeah, why don't you run like a, four weeks? Yeah, run a cut right now and then Doug will give you maps power lift. So we'll shoot oh, maps great. we'll shoot maps power lift over And then to go you. on a bulk with it. Yeah, yeah it and then go on a bulk with it. Do you know what weight class lift. you're trying to compete in? Um honestly, no, because this I literally you guys are the only reason I started um barbell benching squatting and deadlifting like literally i used to listen to all these influencers i'm not going to name them besides like greg you said um they told me oh you don't need to do all these movements and stuff um you just like you don't have to be in a surplus to gain muscle they just told me all this like bullshit that really that you guys debunk on a daily basis so i literally just started the big three lifts like a few months ago so I'm really just competing against myself. Like whatever weight class I'm in, I don't expect to score high or rank high or whatever. But as long as I PR, um, it's me versus me at the end of the day. Yeah, great attitude. Yeah, yeah, good attitude yeah. Four Perfect. week, four week cut. You drop your cal. You're at 4,700, which is incredible. So I'd bring yeah. it down to like 4,000, 3,800. 
because you have so much room okay. to go for four weeks. Right. After that, go on mass power lift and then start start bumping calories slowly from there and then see what happens. Uh, but that's a, you're a great, great place to be. Great yeah. attitude, too, about it. Yeah. yeah. No, I appreciate that. Where, what type of program? I know I'm in anabolic and I literally, I finished the first foundational workout of phase one on Monday. Um, so, and obviously in a cut, just gaining strength isn't going to be really the best thing or the most like, um, the likely thing. So do you recommend this? Obviously, is it recommended to any people listening to this of your viewers, but would you recommend going forward to like the phase three or the muscle pump part of no. anabolic just so I can, um, like kind of speed through no. and then start powerlifting? No, no, no. So, so the way power, I know how power lift is laid out, right? So power lift yeah. is going to follow phase one really well. Cause with power lift, it actually ends kind of like phase one. So go ahead and do maps anabolic phase one, do it for four weeks with the cut, then jump into maps power lift and start bumping your calories. It's a, it's a, it would be a oh. great transition. Mm -hmm. So don't even go into phase two and three of, uh, no. You, know, oh, okay. you don't want him to finish in a bulk. He's got a long ways before December, bro, is the power lift. Yeah, no, but um, I, I trust me. I wish I could, but uh, I was doing the. How long is power lift again? I think it's three months. Yeah, he's going to be. Oh, he, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, you want. Okay, so what, what I would. That's a good point. You need to find out when the meet is, okay? Ideally, yeah. the way power lift is written, it's written to take you right into a meet. So that's the idea. Okay. So we need to kind of get in somewhat of an idea of when you this meet. Like backward is, schedule it. Yeah, and, and reverse the schedule. And so then you go. Okay, I, I want my last week basically of power lift in the week before I go to my meet. So then, so then back those weeks out. The program I believe is eight. Is it eight or nine weeks? I think it's uh, I think it's nine weeks. Yeah, it's eight or nine weeks long. So back it out that way, and then if and then from there, how much time do we have till to now? To now, which I think you are going to have enough time to run another yeah, program. I think you'll be able to run it all the way through. That's a good point. Yeah, so you should be able to run all of anabolic pretty close, if not all of it. And then run into uh, then maps power lift. Yeah, and, and and it doesn't matter that you're in phase one with a cut. And it, it, just keep it as it as it is. Yeah, you just and I think you you already have a good attitude about things. Obviously, you understand that if you're in a cut, that you're likely not going to be hitting PRs. So what? Train like you're trying to right. Train like you're yeah. trying to build muscle. Train like you're trying to get stronger. Recognize you're in a deficit, and so there's because you might you know sometimes you do good programming and following and being consistent. I've seen it happen in young guys where they actually even in a cut get stronger. It's not impossible. Uh, so especially if you get better at the skill, you you are a relatively new squatter, deadlifter, overhead pressing yeah. guy. So you actually, it's not surprising to see someone like you get stronger even in a cut because yeah. that is those are such skilled movements that just you getting better at the skill, you get better at your lift. So yep. don't mm -hmm. be surprised if you do, but you don't, it doesn't matter because that's not your focus. Your focus is to get cut, get lean uh, while you're on it. And then you go to your bulk when you, when you switch to power. We'll lift. send mass power lift over to you. Okay, Matt. Uh, I, yeah. Awesome. I appreciate that. And I think I'll be able to either maintain or even somehow increase strength because I've never done full body before. I've always done, oh, I started yeah. Yeah. multiple legs twice a week and then I scaled that down to five and then four days upper lower split. Mm -hmm. And I'm really excited to do full body because I think I, there's just like a stimulus there that I can tap into that I've never really experienced. 100%. Excellent, yeah. 100%. Excellent man. Well, I'm glad you're listening to us and not uh, other people with high pitched voices. Yeah, I know. You guys, <laughs> trust me, you guys have been a blessing. And if there's anyone listening that's like, oh, I don't know if I should trust these guys. These guys have changed my life. Um, and it's like a blessing to even talk to you guys right now. Appreciate awesome. it. Thanks, Thank man. you, Matt. Thank you. All right, have a good one, guys. You got it, have man. Have a good one. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, great. I didn't even consider the time. He could totally run the program oh, yeah, back yeah. to back yeah. and yeah. he'd be he'd be so you know totally set. I, f I find it interesting that people still that people would advise people to not do barbell lifts. I don't. I don't it's because it. it's clickbaity right now, dude. I know. It's because it's clickbaity. I, I mean, this goes back to the conversation that we and you know what, Craig, perfect example of what we had that that little friendly good debate with Eugene, Eugene Tao, Tao yeah. on on our show. Reminded like, me of that. Yeah, it's just he is a, a, a what I when I when we talk about barbell de deadlifting and squatting he is the avatar he is the kid I'm thinking about because all these influencers and people are telling him the opposite and they gravitate towards that you know why because squatting is hard yeah exactly and so it's like oh I don't need it you yeah. know this influencer this who looks jacked and looks awesome is telling me it's not that important there's other things you can do so you avoid it and then guess what happens you finally find us 
you, we convince you it's something for you, and it changes your life. Yeah, you start getting so you start squatting and deadlifting. All of a sudden, you pack on more muscle. You build a faster metabolism you've ever built in your life. Oh wow, look at that! Yep. Strange. <laughs> Our next caller is Mateo from Georgia. Mateo, how's it going, man? How can we help you? Hey guys, uh, appreciate you having me on today. Um, like everyone, just want to start by saying thanks uh, for everything you guys do. I've been listening for about six months. And uh, I found you guys six months ago. I've been listening pretty religiously ever since. So the fitness content's obviously awesome, um, but really the other content is what I, what I wanted to say thanks for. So uh, I had my son a, about six months before I found you guys and kind of struggling with the new parent thing. And so hearing you guys talk about your family and your kids and all that was you know really cool and helpful for me to, to process everything. Awesome. So awesome. thanks for that. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so to my question. So two questions, and I'll start with the first one. So I caught a stomach bug this weekend, and it kind of took me out, and I've been running a force cut really ever since. So not one to pass up a good opportunity. So uh, what I'm thinking is, is, should I capitalize this and run a cut for a week or two, um, or do I need to get back to somewhat normal calories before I do that? So I just increased my calories to about 2,900 a week before um, I got sick. And I've been eating way less for a few days. Yesterday was the first day I tracked, and it was fifteen hundred. And before that, I was probably a thousand or less. Are so, you are you over the virus yet? Are you healthy? I'm on the up and up. So today I feel much better physically. I'm still weak, like just walking up my the stairs, my legs burn, stuff like that. And so you know, I'm eating more today than yesterday, and each day is getting a little bit better. Yeah. Um, that's so the, that's the I'm priority. Recovering. That's the priority, Mateo. Yeah. The priority is to get healthy. So cut, bulk, I don't care. Have you guys ever get done healthy. that before, though? What? I've done that before. Of course. You know? Have you, have you ever done that before? No. You've never done that before? No, man. I, I hated being skinny. You're so, so lame. So if I lost weight. What about you? Yeah. Have cut? What about you? Yeah. Well, just where I've done exactly what would happen to him right now. You, you've yeah. been sick for like three sick, or then you four, yeah, four that, days. You're already, with it. A, yeah, yeah, you're already depleted yeah, like crazy. That. So you're just like, I'm already there. Well, he's still, he's still coming out of it. And so I'm saying yeah. like, get healthy first. So whatever makes you feel better is what I would do. And then when you're out of it. Then you can go in whatever di direction you want. But usually yeah. after a virus, the smart thing to do is to feed the body. Yeah. Not to continue to, to deplete the body because your nutrients is, are yeah. probably low yeah. and you're already depleted. So, I mean, the, the, the healthy point. thing to do would be get well. And then when you're well. Yeah, because you risk getting sick again. Yeah. Yeah, you, uh, ri you risk getting really sick by being depleted like that again. Yeah. But and, and as far as when you're sick, what to do, like it, you, you want to get healthy before, before anything else. So that usually means skipping workouts doing light movement, walking, you know, what feels good. Um, not Missing workouts when you're sick is not taking away from your gains. It's actually going right. to keep more of your gains than if you work out when you shouldn't. So if you work out when you shouldn't work out, that actually sets you back uh, more than taking the days off. So remember that. And, and this is speaking from personal experience. It's really hard for me to take time off even when I'm sick. I've had to learn this lesson at least 15 times yeah. before it finally We've set in. We've tried the opposite multiple times. So I know mm. for, for me, like not feeling good, uh, thinking that the workout was going to help to kind of re-energize me and get me back on track. But in fact, yeah, set me back a, a few more days than I should have. So yeah, restoring your body, replenishing your body with nutrients. That makes a lot of sense. Totally. Yeah, I haven't lifted since Friday. I've been taken off. Uh, today, maybe I feel good enough to try, but I'll probably wait till tomorrow. Um, before doing it. But I mean, as far as the cut goes, I've never done a cut. And so right now I'm running mass aesthetic. I have like a week and a half left. Program's been great. And so my plan initially was, okay, after I finish aesthetic, I'll go into a cut for maybe a week and then bulk two weeks, three weeks, and then back to a cut, kind of go like that. Um, but since I'm already here, I'm like, okay, should I just, obviously cutting calories in half is too much, but should I just go ahead and go back up to a little bit less than where I was or what should I do? No, nah, I'd focus on getting healthy and, and you're probably going to want to feed yourself a little bit just to get those nutrients uh, back in your body. You know, those viruses can be pretty nasty and really deplete your body. Also, yeah. are you adding uh, sodium to your water? Are you drinking electrolytes? That's a big deal when you have a stomach virus. Yeah, I've been drinking uh, body armor light. I don't have LMNT. I hear you guys talk about it all the time and I wish I had some already, yeah. um, but I didn't want to order it and wait or whatever. So body armor and trying to do stuff like that. Yeah, electrolytes are real important. The sodium is the most important part. So I don't think it has enough sodium, uh, the one that you mentioned, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken. Okay. So I'd add a little bit, just a pinch of sea salt to even that, just to kind of help uh, keep yourself from, if you're noticing muscle cramps and weakness and stuff like that, it's usually an electrolyte imbalance. Yeah, definitely weakness, no cramps. 
um, but definitely weakness. So yeah, I'll try that. So, All right. All right. I mean, as far as running, you know, a cut tentatively. So my goal is end of September, I'm going to Mexico with my wife. And so I'm thinking that's why I was like, maybe I'll try a cut to see what happens. See if I can, you know, add some definition or whatever. Should I, obviously you said get back to kind of normal. Should I wait until I get closer? I think we're like eight weeks out. I, um, I bet you, doing I bet you're going to, you'll get more definition from going the opposite direction right now. Now, you know, three weeks before you go four weeks before, yeah. if everything's going well, you could do a little bit of a cut. But coming out of an illness like that, usually reversing and refeeding the body results in a leaner looking physique, not the other way around. Yeah, you also look like a pretty lean guy already. So I wouldn't, I mean, four weeks out from from getting ready to go to the beach would be yeah. plenty of time. I mean, I four weeks out is what I did for a sh for shows, bro. So okay. you, 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 if you manage yourself relatively lean, uh, you can make some serious, especially if you're not somebody who cuts that you made it sound like you don't ever cut. So your body- Never. Yeah, so if you actually go on a- on a pretty aggressive cut for four weeks heading into, or even three, <laughs> you're heading into vacation, you'll you'll make some moves. And totally. I, I would do, you know, kind of calories first and intensity, and then slowly start to introduce some, you know, cardio slash walking, moving more, yep. and then start to slowly ramp that up all the way until we I go to, to vacation and you'll, you'll lean out. Exactly. Time. Okay. Yeah. So three, four weeks before, and then I'll start it. Okay. Awesome. Yep. You yep. got it, man. Then my second question is, is related to being sick. So like I said, I haven't lifted or done anything since Friday. So going back into it, I'm in aesthetic. Do I just pick up where I left off or do I, um, you know, try to cut out focus days and do foundational to stay on track? Uh, I don't really know how to go back into it. I'm uh, very routine oriented and that's why I like the structure. So I'm like, okay, what do I do now? Go, I would do the first workout back, do one set instead of three or four of whatever is recommended. Just do one, see how you feel the following day. If you're really, really sore, okay. then do the same workout again. If you feel okay, then slowly bring yourself back up to what you were doing before, but don't go back to what you were doing before. That's going to be over, over killing it. So slowly work back into it over yep. what, like a week or probably I guess it depends how I feel. Yeah, yeah I would, I would, I would restart that phase wherever you were at. So whatever phase you were on, okay. just restart at the beginning of it and take Sal's advice, you know, do at least a set or two less, uh, per exercise and then see how you feel more than likely. You've already taken enough time off to where you actually probably feel sore from just getting out there and doing any, almost anything. Yeah. And then slowly, you know, each workout, I, I would slowly start to ramp up to try and get back to what the actual program is, is, is telling you to do. It'll take like a week, probably yeah. a week yeah. to get back to where you were. Okay. Awesome. Anything else I should do? Get back into it. You said sodium, obviously hit my protein and stuff, but anything else to really focus on? No, that's about it. I mean, sodium is a big one, right? So sodium, your magnesium, potassium, but uh, mostly sodium. I'd focus on that. And of course, just eating, just feeding yourself properly. Awesome. All right. Cool. Hey, really helpful. I appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks, brother. All right, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, so you you went on a cut after having diarrhea, huh? That's yeah. really weird, bro. <laughs> no, I I could totally relate to getting sick. I get the well, mentality. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna yeah, because you're now. you've already lost like five. And your appetite's already gone. Yeah, your appetite's gone. So instead of like, but I, it's not it's not good advice, right? Just no, to your point. Uh, but I wanted to admit that that's uh, I've been in that mindset before. Where I'm like, well, I'm already low calorie. I don't uh, feel like eating a bunch. I'm going to use this to my advantage. I'm going to stay low calorie, like. But yeah, it's not. Yeah, good. and what happens? What happens to me is if I do something like that, when I come out of it, I try to increase my calories and end up looking leaner yeah. through that process. Nope. You know, because I'm feeding my body. Yeah, it's giving it what it needs. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. Adam is on Instagram at mindpumpadam, and you can find me on Twitter at mindpumpsal. This one's really important, and that is to. Phase your training. If somebody trains for a full year doing a bench press and they're always aiming for five reps, if you compared that person to a person who did bench press where they did three or four weeks of five reps, but then they did three or four weeks of 12 reps and then three or four weeks of, let's say, 15 to 20 reps, and then they'll throw in some supersets, at the end of that year, you're going to see more consistent progress from the person who's moving in and out and less injury. That's another thing. You'll see less injury as well.